I think it's something that's very interesting from the Singapore perspective is that how to make the technology more accessible, but at the same time, as a doctor and also a researcher, how do you um, publicize in a policy making perspective from a patient perspective? And some term I always think about is how to make medicine sexy in some sense. Like people yeah. are so attracted to it that, oh, we're so interested in it. So I think it's something that Hong Kong can do better in this regard. So to conclude our like interview, I would also like to ask from, from myself perspectively, any recommendation from any like young ophthalmologists and researchers, or even from med student perspective, how what advice would you give them? Um, I I mean I I think that you're gonna so one is always be open to understanding or seeing new things, mm. okay? Because I think if you're not open with your thinking, then it's very easy to exclude certain things as well, mm. right? And whether that really means even going to a different country to see new things or being open to basically having that in inquisitive mind, which I think generally yeah. most of us have, I think is really, really important and stuff. That's one thing. Same thing I'd say is that, you know, find something that you're basically interested in. If you, you know, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that um, people will say to me when I was junior, they will say, you know, you're so enthusiastic on something in this thing, topic, right? Or something and stuff. And I say, well, because I, I enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy mm -hmm. reading about stuff. I enjoy understanding and I, you know, when you can, and then if you have the ability or you have the, you know, you've been able to take something from the lab all the way to your patient, it's unbelievable because you can see, you know, your, as you saw, patients sitting in front of you are having something that's invented by the doctor who's actually doing the surgery. I mean, there's not that many times where you can basically say that, but it's great that you feel that you've improved somebody's outcome because of being able to do it. And we're lucky as doctors that we can actually do that and stuff. So mm -hmm. having that ability to be able to do that, I, I think is great. And I think that we all see this. And, you know, when you're in clinics, you see patients, maybe they're not managed the best that they can be. They're struggling yeah. in certain areas and things like that. And, you you know, you have to always think, can I can I do better? Can, can we do something mm. better on this? And it may be something completely crazy. It may be something you have to go and basically look at you know, read up about, find out about something. But, you know, those new steps, whenever people make new steps or big innovation, I can tell you the amount of times people will say to you, this is completely crazy. What, you know, what are you doing? So it, everybody's going to have heard that, heard true. that kind of response and stuff, right? And of course, you know, if, I mean, there's a famous quote by Einstein, right? If, you, if, if research worked every time, we wouldn't call it research, right? Because yeah. obviously you're going to get pitfalls. It's not going to work every time. Some things are going to require, um, you know, tweaking and stuff. But, you know, when you look at the path of a product or something to get to the final destination point, there are many hurdles along the way itself. But, you know, if you keep on going forward, 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 then you can basically get there. The other thing is, is that, you know, you're not people, they, then you're not the only person, right? So mm. there are many people in the same boat. And, you know, I have a community of people who are at the same level as me now, but we weren't all at this level. We were all juniors at the same yeah. time as well, right? Okay, now we're all professors, but it, you know, we kind of like went through this stuff and we'd moan and complain about papers, doing research, getting this grant, doing this whatever stuff. And you can sound it off each other and you can provide your own sort of support system around yeah, you to help you with this thing itself. So you're not you're not alone. And there are many people who basically want to do this. And there are people who can also help you and stuff to try to help you do research projects, look you know, around you and stuff and things as well. And there and there are mm. opportunities to take that. And, the, and at the end of the day, you know, people say to you, oh, well, a lot of times people say to me, oh, well, you will, you know, they, they'll say to me, oh, you were bound to do well, look at your CV and stuff. Yeah, sure. So I always say to them, oh, if I need, if you, if you told me that 20 years ago, I was going to do well, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have worked so hard and yeah. stuff, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. It doesn't work like that, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, it's a fact that it, it doesn't matter what you, what you've done. You're only going to be judged by where you are on yeah. that specific t uh, time point, right? And you're not competing against anyone. You're just competing against yourself, right? So mm -hmm. I, I never look at it. There may, I see many things where people are doing some really exciting stuff, and I think, God, oh, wow, this is really great. And and you just think, okay, well, you know, you just need to basically do your things. And it, okay, if you get to a situation one day where you're at that level, then that's great. And you feel that okay, I've really basically accomplished something. So I think that that. Being open to that and finding mm. something you enjoy is really going to help you because, you know, when things are good, you know, your papers are getting published, you're giving lots of lectures, that's great. And so, yeah. and everybody's going to enjoy that. But it's not like that all the time. And yeah. there are lots of ups and downs. And when it's down, if you in really enjoy something and then you really think, okay, you know, this is why I want to basically do that and stuff. And this is why I chose this as a, as a career option. Then you'll always find that it's almost like a vacation as opposed to a career. Yeah. 
you're basically doing. And I think that's that, and I think that applies to research as well as basically mm. on the on the clinical side of whatever field. Yeah, I think the beauty of seeing the silver lining in every difficult situation, especially in your career where you have a lot of ups and also downs, is very important to know that your passion doesn't die out because of the grants, the research, the the mundane research work, the data analysis, you can still find a passion in it. It's very impressive. So I uh, once again, I really, really thank you for taking your time to spend um, no your interview, interview um, to talk about your career and also the, the exciting technology that developing in Singapore, which I think not even for medical students, also from ophthalmologists, we don't really know what's going on in the most cutting edge area. So that's why the reason I wanted to interview back when I was um, attaching with you is that there are so many new things going on and there are so many things that you, you you think is very normal in your perspective, but from my perspective, it's just so new. And that's why when I go to APA CRS and I see the different technologies, and yeah. that I, that's a very bright future for ophthalmology. And it's a very nice field to get into, not just um, because of the advancement, but at the same time, the diversity that people and ophthalmologists can get into work is very impressive. So once again, thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity.